dude, Misha, thank you so much for coming on. Of course. And 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 for hanging. Um, Thanks for I want to talk me. about I want to talk about a few things. Um, we are going to talk about uh, the ultimate drum programming guide, which is. A, a crazy drum programming course, um, and I think there's no one better to do that sort of course uh, than you. Um, as you were the first guy that I ever saw, uh, I think basically I discovered Superior Drummer through you uh, and your early posts. And I think a lot of people did. Do you remember when you first came across Superior Drummer? Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was even before that. It was like Drum Kit from Hell. It was because yeah. uh, it was associated with Meshuggah, and Meshuggah has been like my favorite band oh. since the beginning of time. And like you know, and I was right. on the forum, and you know that was like the hot the hot ticket is everyone was getting yeah. uh, drum kit from hell. Which at that time like didn't it was just a collection of samples, and I think you could like load it into Reason if you remember that thing. So I used to yeah. like load it into Reason, program the drums, export it from Reason, import it into Cubase, and hope everything lined up. You know. Uh, dude it was such that, a process <laughs> that, do you ever do you ever look back and think like you know gosh if i had to do that again i wouldn't do all, like because it was yeah, not a hundred percent like you were how hungry did you have to be to write and like as you know you're coming of age as like a songwriter and guitarist like all of those things you got to really want it in order to do it at that time i always say that you need like you know there's that naive idealist sort of energy and hunger that you have yeah and bands would not exist if not for that you know if everyone right. knew what was really how, <laughs> how the sausage is really made people would be like oh that's crazy i'm not doing that you know no, i don't want to do that everyone that's you stupid. need that level of belief like well maybe i can't because it's basically like saying like well maybe i can win the lottery if i like really try like Ugh, you know and like everyone would be like that's in, that's insane that's an insane thing to think you know Right. Um, but, but you need that with, with this, um, because that is the level of, of serendipity and synchronicity and like, and just random luck that then you have yeah. to hopefully take advantage of in the right way. Like when I look at this, the things that have had to happen, people are always like, yeah, what was your big break? And it's like, no, it's just a bunch of very small things that all added up. And that's like almost more terrifying. Because one big break is like, well, I just have to get this one thing. It's like, no, right. you need to get about a thousand things that all kind of work together to that, that hopefully all work together and don't crush you. So, yeah, a bit of a tangent there. Also, no, the no. name of that forum, yeah, shout out. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's how that all started. Um, I remember uh, I had a buddy of mine uh, show me your 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 demos that you were posting and immediately you had amazing drum tones and your drum parts were very creative and they had a swing how much of you actually playing drums yourself do you think factors into your sound that you still have today but i mean really i would argue that your sound is evolved but it's essentially unchanged you still have that flavor uh if you had never played drums do you think you would have any of that it's a really good question it's hard to say um I would put it this way. It, it probably it probably helped, sure. but I wouldn't say it's a prerequisite because I know a lot of people who couldn't play a beat on drums who can program incredible drums. Fair. And um, Nolly's a good example of that, actually. Nolly's got like the weirdest set of skills when it comes to drums. <laughs> I mean, maybe he could play a very basic beat, but I don't think, you know, he, he would necessarily even have good feel, but he's such a snob about feel, you know? Sure. Uh, he can hear it. He can strike a drum with his right hand probably better than like 90% of drummers out there. Like he can, he's really refined very specific things, mainly for yeah. sampling. So like he yeah. could actually sample a kit really well, like better than like most professional drummers because he knows how to sort of extract the sound out of that one hit. It was very That's specific. And he ended up learning how to program drums fantastically because he had yeah. the ear for, for listening what, what, what he wanted. And what he would do is he would program, I, I, I guess having a very basic understanding of the mechanics of what can and sure. cannot be done in, in what we'll call like a realistic drum performance. So understanding that you're limited to four limbs and then maybe having a further understanding of what drummers may tend to do and tend not to do. Things that are technically possible, but just kind of awkward or just wouldn't really be done, right? Sure. Um, so like... Uh, I think he got a good sense of that by like 
trying to reprogram some of his favorite parts or fills that drummers they love was play, were playing. Oh, that that's was a, cool. That, that was a really big thing where it would you could sort of just visually see and call back on like these little things. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's I guess that's what's going on there. Um, sort of like an ear training exercise and just a way to understand the mechanics of what's going on in these things that you think sound really good. That's interesting. Um, and the inverse of that, I suppose, uh, my band's drummer is a is very young. I think he's 23, 24. And he grew up playing drums and learning parts that were programmed. So that really affected his way of playing and a sensibility. And I think, in my opinion, uh, just as someone on the outside looking in, uh, a drummer like him or any of the younger drummers will have will start at a much higher level than, say, a drummer... 30 years ago there's a, there's a there's some really interesting cases of that over the years you probably know mike malian from from monuments right uh yeah uh-huh yeah, yeah. insane drummer like like insane Crazy. phenomenal talent hits drums harder than pretty much anyone i've ever seen and insanely right. consistent well as it turns out he heard i think like a demo of icarus lives back in the day and he was like damn the drummer <laughs> sounds incredible it's hitting every hit so hard he's like i guess i gotta hit that hard so he was trying to emulate these programmed drums, not knowing that it wasn't a drummer. And that sort of raised the bar. And like, that's why he kind of plays in this almost unreal way. Like, I don't really know many people who could do what he can do. I think maybe Alex Rudinger is another example of that. Oh, like, great where example. He wanted to maybe sound like death metal drummers who you were hearing the final product with triggers and, and you know, yes. mixed and everything in context. And he's like, well, you know, I want to see if I can get that to sound like that sort of naturally. So I, I think it's interesting how this has influenced the culture of drumming and maybe raised the bar of talent because you're just maybe sometimes assuming incorrectly like that this is a legitimate performance, whether it is like a drummer playing or not, you're assuming that you're just hearing drums in the room when there's often much more to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and going along with that same train of thought, do you think that younger drummers are potentially sucked into that world fully in that they'll instantly ask because i've worked with a lot of drummers uh that will instantly ask grid everything take all the feel out and i'm just like man you it, it can't be perfect like you aren't perfect but that's what makes you great and that's what you makes you feel uh wh where's the, where's the line as far as performance versus perfection i think that that's a i think that's a very interesting and, and and perhaps deep question and and it sort of spans across genres sure because there's a lot of genre I, this is sort of talking within the context of metal and maybe yeah. modern polished rock where where we're sort of trained to hear things that are quantized right yeah. and trained right. to hear things on the beat um perhaps a lot more perfectly than maybe even the best drummers can play and it, it even comes down to other things such as, you know, good drummer, no matter how good a drummer is, if they're playing something complex with their feet, their hands will suffer. If they're playing something complex with yep. their hands, their feet will suffer. There's no one who's like kind of like, uh, for lack of a better term, at 127, you know, right, um, right. everything at all times and really nailing everything at all times. That's just not how, how humans are. Um, so then you have to start asking, like, what is perfection? Is perfection being exactly on the beat, like, like you know, a quantized computer program uh, or co quantized computer programming or is it you know allowing things to flam slightly and be slightly late and and early and is that what gives it feel um i think i've always gravitated more towards the feel side of things and this sure. is where you I know agree. You, you it's really i i found in my experience it's down to the drummer and what they like if they listen to a lot of sort of death metal and less groovy stuff they will be sort of on top of the beat in how they play and it can be kind of tricky for them to 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 understand the swing of things, and yeah. perhaps vice versa as well. Um, you know, and if you're if you're around a lot of field drummers and guys who groove, yeah. then that sort of becomes what drums sound like to you. And anything that isn't that is sort of incorrect. So I don't think there's any sort of objective perfection here. It's just always contextual. It's always about what the genre of music is and and what's sort of more appropriate. So there'd be drummers that wouldn't always be the most appropriate guy for the gig. You know. For sure. Uh, speaking of genres, uh, so your ultimate drum programming guide, you actually go into five different, you, you do multiple genres. Yeah. You do, you do multiple songs and you also write a song or basically program it from yeah. scratch. Yeah. 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 And uh, like what, 
I, do you were you always able to just kind of choose a genre as far as your ear goes as for when you're programming drums or has that developed over time i think it's developed over time but i think i've always tried with music to, to have a bit of my cake and eat it too even with periphery <laughs> yeah. we, we we cover a lot of we cover a lot of ground just because we kind of always wanted to and we did it from the beginning because we were like i saw a lot of bands that would kind of um you know, define one sound on one al album and then like change it on the other, and people be like, "Where did this come from?" And I was hoping yeah. to like never have that problem. Like, if we just yeah. ca came out with our mission statement the first time, like we're gonna be all over the place. Just that's that's yeah. our deal, you know. So this then is it a wouldn't tape. be weird. It would just be like, yeah. "Oh, they're just going all all over the place." And I think that that sort of required some breadth of of genres and understanding. And it's just something yeah. that's really just I didn't want to have to choose. I wanted to I wanted to have it all. <laughs> um yeah I, I and and i mean you get stuck too much i mean you have you have a bunch of projects and things you do it's like totally. like i'm i'm sure it's just it's like you're, you get this fulfillment out of this thing so now this thing becomes exciting because just the antithesis to that in some ways or just a completely different yeah. context or way to write or think about it just anything that switches it up you know keeps it spicy in the bedroom <laughs> i love that um you are surrounded by gear and I've had this theory, actually, my father brought this thing up um, uh, several months ago, and I wanted your take on it. Mm. He mentioned, so uh, I, you're a car guy. You love cars. I do. Um, I am not, I, I call myself a retired car guy. I was actually a professional. <laughs> you're what we uh, call certified. a smart car guy. <laughs> What's that? You're a smart car guy. You're, you got <laughs> out, man. You got out while you could. Um, I never... I used to work on cars professionally uh, for most of my 20s. I was certified and I was really good at oh, uh, wow. working in aligning and uh, doing front end suspension stuff on classic cars, uh, 40s Mercuries, uh, you know, muscle cars. And I got Whoa. to work on a lot of really cool stuff. We need stuff. to just have a sidebar conversation about all that later. <laughs> Dude, yeah, let's. Um, my dad brought up an interesting point that even in my earliest youngest days i was always instantly gravitating towards all the car shows so the night riders the dukes of hazards the car based shows uh television when i was a kid and then that grew into obviously being a mechanic and working on cars and then that always kind of paralleled my love for not only guitar playing but guitar geared now musicians have famously loved cars since the dawn of time but do you think there is any connection or what is the connection between your love of cars and guitars. What is that? Is it a tactile thing? Is it a feedback experience thing? What is it? So, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. And uh, I don't think I've really talked too much about, car. I haven't let it mix too much. You know, I've kind of kept those sure. worlds separate. But one, one thing that I'll say is I got into music a little bit later, you know? I was kind of forced to take piano lessons uh, when, when I was younger by my mom and, and I had this resentment towards, you know, piano and, and music yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't until I was about 12 or 13 that like I got my first drum set and my first guitar and like that, that's, that's where the, 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 the gears started turning and the, the, the ball started ro rolling down the hill. I was like, Hmm, maybe there's something here. Cars. I can't think of a moment in time that I wasn't just obsessed with cars and thinking about them all day long. And that still right. hasn't changed. So in some some ways that's been a more genuine love. So it might almost be like that influenced how I got into guitars and drums, you know, because I always liked I always liked um, like exotic cars and sports cars and anything mm -hmm. that pushed engineering forward. And and I always loved the engineering of cars and Same. just how 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 clever it was and what like looking back at how much we've improved over different eras and things like that. Yeah. And I always gravitated towards sort of the stats and like you know there was this 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 thing you know, i was living in belgium at the time and there was this thing called top trumps i think is what was it called and it, you had these cards okay. with all the stats and like i'd learn and memorize all that stuff so you could kind of see where this is going it's like that yeah. kind of informed how i got into into anything including music so then it was like learning what guitars i liked and how i wanted them to be engineered and what you know what specs i liked on my on my instruments and why this was this way and that way. Um, I think I think the two are very much intertwined. Or it's just more I like I like very similar things about those two things. It's, it's the same reason I like watches. It's the same anything sort of sure. mechanical, uh, where where there's a lot of really clever engineering going into it, and where I just think on an, uh, on that level it's fascinating. I'll just gravitate towards. 
Uh, I also think it's really interesting uh, that the between like guitar world, I would argue is now obviously there are huge technological improvements, but on the whole, the guitar world is perpetually stuck in the old ways and the traditions of doing things. However, uh, on the car side of things, uh, with your particular love of things like Ferraris, Lambos, Porsches, all those things, you're not modifying your cars, at least that not that I'm aware of. Like you're not in there going and changing out cams and you know messing with the timing not or anything really, like no. that. But with the guitar stuff, you are very much into custom made you know stuff tailored to you. Why is that? Is that uh, something with the car uh, industry generally being as forward thinking as possible and always trying to technologically improve? You know, uh, that's a dude. You're asking some very very good questions here. Uh, I try. This, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that's really interesting. I've never really thought about that, but but intuitively, I would say that you know, a guitar is a much simpler thing, and I I feel like I have a, much more of a grasp. Like I know pretty much exactly how our guitar yeah. works. I'll say I was never sort of uh, as much of like like I I can't work on cars. I'd love to learn actually, but that's sure. a side where you would know way more than I do. I sort of appreciate them uh, more from a driver's perspective rather than that's like, awesome. like working working on them. Yeah. So it's just more that I perhaps if I understood a bit more about how that worked and there, as you know, there's so much that goes into setting up a car, right? Oh, they yeah. could drastically change everything about it. And, and even with, I do a lot of sim racing and like, you know, I, I mess with the setup there and I, I know a little bit, but you're just sort of clicking buttons around like an alignment right. takes time. And, and I have like a cursory knowledge of, of some of this stuff. But largely, a lot of the cars that, that I like, like, for example, I have this uh, Porsche GT3, and there's this guy mm -hmm. in charge of the GT division at Porsche named Andy Proninger. That guy's a genius, and everything he touches is kind of yeah. gold. So the car is kind of good. <laughs> I'm like, I don't <laughs> yeah. think I know more than that guy. I might modify little things, like I, I, I got a, a, a louder exhaust on it. Okay. Um, but but I'm, I'm also very happy with how that car drives, and it's very balanced. And I mean, you could do this with guitars too, where like, say you put a pickup that's really hot. Now it doesn't match the neck pickup anymore. Or the, the character right. doesn't match anymore. Or like you just mod it in a way where like it may be better in this one context, but actually compromises in the other. And uh, I, I think balance is kind of important. So, so that's why I don't go too heavy down the modding route. And I honestly don't mod my guitars that much. What I may do is like, or a custom order a guitar, but that's a lot easier to do than custom ordering a car. If I had the means, yeah. maybe I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, so when can we look forward to seeing your signature line of turbos? No, I'm just kidding. Dude, just um, uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> give me 10 years and let's see where we're at, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is, I mean, it is all about balance. For me, um, knowing, I, I, I think I, I got to a point where it kind of ruined the experience because driving is about freedom and it is about the experience of driving. And for me, I went too far the other way and it kind of ruined it for me and burnt me out if I'm honest. So I, I think where you're at seems to be a really good, really good place and a really good balance between, you know, like, like, and, and getting too deep into it. Well, I mean, we're, we're going on a bit of a tangent, but I could give some, some, some personal experience and, and advice there because I kind of did that with music, you know, where I, I kind of burnt myself. It's a very tricky yeah. thing when the thing you love becomes your job because on yes. paper, it's a wonderful thing. And you're like, man, this beats a nine to five. It's also a very dangerous thing because it becomes very hard to set boundaries and to sort of separate work and life. And then that ultimately leads to burnout. And it also changes your relationship with it a little bit, you know? Once you have to yeah. do something rather than you get to do something, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but it actually does make quite the impact on how oh, everything yeah. sort of feels to you. So I've been very careful with the car thing because there's probably a bunch of things I could have done. I've always been so financially minded and about hustling that, uh, and, and sort of entrepreneurial sure. to where I think, well, logically, like, why not? do this and save myself the money, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I've been very careful and somewhat precious with my love of cars to where I think I would rather spend the money and not have it turn into this job so that I can allow myself to enjoy yeah. it. Like re let it remain the hobby, appreciate it as the hobby that it is. The cost of that is money, unfortunately, but there's always a cost and I'd rather spend money and maintain my love for it then yeah. you know spend time and stress and and ultimately get burnt out and then have this sort of complicated relationship where i'm like well 
you know, yeah, I love cars, but like, uh, not right now. You know, I, I feel like I'd be very upset if, yeah. if I ever said yeah. something like that. You're, you're buying your sanity, really. Yeah, and, and, and happiness to some degree because as a hobby, I'm, I'm able to just enjoy it for what it is. And ironically, thanks to, thanks to the, the, the other business ventures doing uh, kind of well, like Periphery has sort of become a, a passion project again, sort of as of Periphery 3, Periphery 4 especially. That's when periphery sort of like I stopped looking at the financials. I stopped caring about the financials. I don't know how much yeah. money the band makes, and I try not to pay attention to it ever. Try not to care about how much we do a merch a night or what our Good. per head is a night. You know things that I, I used to lose sleep over. I used yeah. to, I never know on a tour when we break even. Like none of those things matter, and it's very freeing. It, it, and and the band has effectively become like. My, my my passion project it's not my day job anymore and i think it's really helped me appreciate it a lot more that's awesome well uh i i uh thanks on behalf of everyone else uh that that love periphery uh thanks for continuing to do it and not getting burnt out yeah, that was uh, a on close one man <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i hear it um uh when you're writing a song uh does any one thing come first? Is it, the, is it the chords? Is it the melody? Is it the drums? Does it change from song to song? It's often the riff. It's often the riff that comes yeah, first. same. And I think whether it's being a drummer or like kind of, I, I really consider myself more of a composer these days rather than a guitarist because it's just sort of these tools are a means to an end. Sure. Um, nice shirt. But um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like I, I, I think, I think, I always have some sort of beat in mind uh, and and that is something that will always be the next thing is the drums because that contextualizes it. And Absolutely. as you know, the drums, you could take a riff and like you could make it sound about five or six different ways depending yeah. just on even some quick change, just the snare placement, kick placement, like the feel of that could drastically change how that part feels and it could make it feel more like a verse or chorus or whatever. And these things are things that, you, like, when I'm programming, I get to experiment with in real time and yeah. sort of hear how, how it'll affect it. So that's, that's sort of an essential part. That'll always be the part that turns the riff into, like, a part of a song. And the drums, I always yeah. say, are, like, what allow people, like, uh, you know, the majority of, of GGD's customers are guitarists, you know, or people who don't play sure. drums, obviously. And what it does is allow you to, to, to take something that's just a riff and then put it in a context where you're looking at more like, how does this fit in the song? How does this flow? You get to work yeah. into arrangements. It turns you into more of a producer role or a composer role uh, rather than just, you know, being a guitarist. So I think it's kind of a good tool for anyone who's interested in, uh, yeah. in that side. Um, when I listen to your stuff, I'm always listening uh, with my songwriter ears on um, first and music listening enjoyment ears second what i hear with your stuff is a an element of fearlessness would you agree with that um, i'm always getting hung up on oh is this like i think i get too in my head sometimes do you ever get that way or how do you avoid oh, I'm that always when in you're my, writing? i'm always in my head i'm always really? in my head oh dude yeah no no there's fear all over the place it's just it's wow. just it's just uh yeah sprayed with fear from day one <laughs> I, I i i remember uh so so that mashuga forum you yeah. know i started posting on forums back in the day because i was just a member of these things and back then you know metal wasn't as cool and extended range instruments weren't as cool so it was cool yeah. to find like-minded people i could just chat with that that weren't like dude shut up like i don't care sure um <laughs> and then there was always a shameless self-promotion section and i always thought the people who posted there were insanely talented i was like man i uh, yeah i i almost didn't post because i was wow. like i have nothing to offer and i i held off on posting there for a long time because i was just too ashamed and then i was like i i, I finally like worked up the the balls to do it and i was like you know what i'll make myself a deal like I'll post it, and if it's as horrible, like I really thought the worst. I thought like my world, I just my world would end if I did that, and I'd just get just so discouraged. I'd like just burn my recording computer and all my guitars, <laughs> and just be like I guess I'll just get a, a desk job. Um, but like, like uh, I, I, I did say like you know, yeah, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Really, post it up, right. and if it sucks, never post again. But then people seemed to like it, so then I kept posting up. Um, but yeah, it's always, it like literally started with fear <laughs> and I don't think Dude. that, that ever yeah. went away. Um, but what it also, 
it wasn't sort of driven by fear. It was driven by exploration. Yeah. Because, you know, I started, I was fortunate enough to start this time where all of a sudden, like, I had a gaming computer and it just happened to be powerful okay. enough to run a DAW. And I had this oh. weird sound card. It was like the upgraded sound card. I had a quarter inch input on it. And I'm like, ooh, wow. Like I could record into this thing. And, and, and that, the doors that that opened up and then learn, like having access to program drums that for the first time sounded realistic. And it was more about, are you going to put the time and work into this to, to make it, try to make it sound good? It's all, right. it's not that, you know, like with, with, with the best drum machines before that, it doesn't matter how detail oriented you were. They sounded like crappy drum machines, yes, drum samples, right? Now you have this thing that if you put the work into it, not only could you, could you get something that, that would trick a lot of people or even drummers to be like, who's playing that? But you could even try to get it to sound good and you could even like develop your own sound because they were kind of on, on process. So you could, you could have your own sort of drum sound that you put together and I just thought that was so cool. And I just locked myself in my room and just did that, you know? That's so sick. Um, That's great. It was, it was wild. It was like discovering this thing and just, it, I became obsessed with it. It was like this thing that didn't exist and then all of a sudden existed. And then the possibilities, it's like, wait, so I can make music by myself silently. You know, I had a Behringer V amp and I could record on headphones <laughs> into that yeah. quarter inch. And I was just like, I can record silently at any hour of the day without bothering my roommates uh, and make an entire song myself. I don't have to pay a studio. I don't have to go. To, I don't have to deal with any other musician and I could do this as much as I want. Yeah. It was literally, yeah, it was yeah. literally that the, the, yeah. the, the Erica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's, that was very empowering. And that sort of, the fear was more about posting it. I was like, regardless of sure. if anyone ever hears any of this, I'm doing this cause this is fun. That's why we do this, kids. It's why we do right? it. Yeah, that's, that's still why to this it. day why why I do it. It's just, it's it's just it's just really fun and satisfying. And like sometimes you get into these flow states where it almost feels like you're just watching yourself write and record a song, and you're just enjoying enjoying it. There's no conscious thought happening. It's just kind yeah. of reacting. And like that's a really that's a really beautiful thing. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, it means you're you're usually onto something kind of cool. Yeah, I love that. All right. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I really, really appreciate you stopping by and uh, hanging out with me. Ultimate Drum Programming Guide, Misha Mansur, learn from the best. If you want to get it, I will link down below in the description. All sorts of genres, all sorts of songs. He does it in real time. It's awesome. So, dude, thank you so much. I'll let you go. And with that, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate See it. See you, kids.